So we have two more kinds of frequency distributions that we need to talk about. And what I've got here is a frequency distribution that shows the count of various grades. And this is going back to the data set that we were looking at in the, lab, in the previous lecture. Now, another way of presenting this data is that's what's called a relative frequency distribution. All right, and what that is is where a frequency distribution shows the count of every variable, right? A relative frequency distribution shows the same data, the same values, but instead it does it as a percentage. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the total, right? If I add these up, that's 24. Uh, then on uh, I'm going to take each individual result and divide it by the total. So we get 1 24th, 10 24th, 7, 1, and 5. Then I'll get out my calculator, right? Uh, do the division for each fraction and multiply by 100 uh, to turn them into percentages. So 1 24th is 4.2%. 10 24ths is 41.7, then 29.2. We've got 1 24th here again, so that's still 4.2%. And 5 24ths, that's 20.8%. Now, once you've got all of these totals, right, you can do a quick check of your results by adding them all up. And if you do that, you're going to get 100.1. Okay, now at this point, you, you could legitimately be concerned, right? Because you're, you're thinking 100, right? The, the total of all the percentages should be 100. But um, it's possible that the number will be a little off. Okay, that, that can happen. And the reason that can happen is I had to round each of the decimal values as I am. Because a lot of these were repeating decimals. Right. So anytime you round a number, you introduce a small error. Right. And that's what you're seeing here. Right. You, you might get a little over. You might get 99.9, .9, for example, might go a little under as well. Um, that's all that is. It, it's, it's round off error. Uh, and that's OK. Right. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead. This is my relative frequency distribution for this data. OK, now the, the second kind, we're gonna, the second new kind we're going to talk about is called a cumulative frequency distribution, right? This is another variation. Now, in this type, the value for each class is the sum of that class and all of the classes that came before it, right? So in this case, the A class will still just be one, but the B and higher class, this will be the Bs and the As, which is 11. The C class will be that 11 plus 7. That's 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. 19 plus 5 is 24. And you notice, in, with a cumulative distribution, this last class should be the grand total. And it is. We saw on the previous slide, right, there were 24 grades in our data set. Okay, so this, this kind of distribution and lets us see the trend in the data. For example, looking at this, I can tell that I had 11 high scores and I had 18 students with passing grades. Okay, so when, when should you use these and when should you not use these? Right? Cumulative distributions <coughs> are useful when we're talking about ordinal data or higher Remember, ordinal data that's data that can be meaningfully sorted okay our rates for example here our, our grades had a progression where a is better than b b is better than c and so on this ordering creates a situation where it makes sense to want to know the results for all of the values below or above a certain point now this what i have here Right. Um, this table has an example of a situation where you wouldn't want to use a cumulative frequency distribution. It's showing the number of different injuries reported by an emergency room. 
Now, there's no reason why you would be interested in how many people in an emergency room experience sprains versus sprains and burns versus sprains, burns, and cuts, etc. Because there, there isn't any kind of meaningful way to order these different types of injuries, their cumulative numbers also aren't going to be meaningful. Okay, so um, now we, we've seen several kinds of distributions, right? And we've seen how we can interpret them, right? What the distributions are telling us. So in the next lecture, what we're going to see is how to take data sets and use them to actually create these frequency distributions.